After years of drawing almost exclusively with alcohol markers, I want to challenge myself. I want to break into a seemingly more versatile medium, gouache. I've never painted with gouache before. Every paintbrush I touch falls apart before I finish a piece. I have a very bad relationship with paintbrushes, so I haven't ventured beyond watercolor or acrylic. I recently watched a Jess Chung painting video, and the texture of the Hemi jelly she used really appealed to me. They look like a happy middle ground between cake and tube watercolor. So that's what I bought. But as soon as I unpacked this palette, I started to second guess my judgment. The palette is very heavy. One of the latches won't stay closed, so I guess I'll just have to tape it shut. I'm glad it came with synthetic brushes because they're perfect for me to destroy and I don't have to feel bad about it. Here I am figuring out how to organize my colors. At first I tried horizontal lines, but the math was not adding up. There were five greens and five blues and six spots per line. So instead I tried vertical lines. And it was better, but I still wasn't satisfied. I'll see if any intuitive arrangement jumps out at me if I put it in a color wheel. Am I stupid? Why don't I just do a warm side and a cool side? Boom. Perfect. I love it. Let's move on. These paints are very hard to open. Opening these paints is like... It took me over an hour to get them all open. They also aren't fully incorporated. There's chalk settled at the bottom really thick and thin oil rising to the top and the sides. So I'm giving them a little mix before I put them in the palette. Okay, background info so you know why I'm about to say some pretty negative things about Hemi. I just spent a month painting a giant canvas with golden artist acrylics, which are really great quality, highly pigmented, beautiful, rich paints. So coming right off that project, it makes me a little too aware of how much less vibrant these Hemi paints are by comparison. They have a good range of colors, but the colors themselves look like they have a lot of chalk or extender or medium to increase the amount of material available without increasing the amount of pigment that's in the material, if that makes sense. Which is par for the course with student grade paints. I'm not saying anything that shouldn't be obvious. You can't expect Ohuhu to be Copics. It's cheap paint, it's fine. Let's move on. Now I'm making a swatch sheet. Hopefully this will give me a nice introduction to how it feels to paint with these colors, how opaque they are, how much water I need, etc. God, here comes the graphing calculator. 2,000 years later. These boxes 100% do not match each other perfectly. I really hope that doesn't grade on you like it grades on me. I really enjoyed the sensation of applying these paints to the page. When I was painting with acrylics, the paint would dry very quickly and get kind of sticky as it dried. Like it would feel sticky to the paintbrush as I tried to apply more paint to an area. But building up this gouache felt much more effortless. It really does feel like an agreeable middle ground between watercolor and acrylic with the best qualities of both while I'm painting. I absolutely love how much less streaky it is than acrylic paint. My brush strokes are noticeable, but very subtle, and I love that. I can definitely understand why people love gouache and like Hemi gouache in particular. Oh my god! Oh my god! Peeling the tape off was not the satisfying experience I was hoping it would be. I knew that the paint was going to run under the tape, that's not the problem. I mean, it's a problem, but it's not the problem. I was not expecting it to come off like pencil shavings. Oh my god, is this normal? When it dries, it feels and still looks very chalky in texture to me, especially the lighter colors. The texture is more pronounced in real life than it is on camera, so it might not look that bad to you. Um, and, and it's not bad, it's not really bad, but 
it cheapens it a little to me in appearance. It feels toothy when I run my finger over it. It's this kind of grittiness, like I almost expect it to leave chalk residue on my finger, but thankfully it doesn't. Maybe everything I'm saying is a non-issue, I don't know. I'm reading a gouache book at the moment that advises gouache is supposed to look adjacent to pastel art, but it also says that highly pigmented professional gouache will look more velvety and vibrant than student grade. And I think that's what I want. Oh my God. I'm supposed to be saving money for a camera. I bought Windsor Newtons. I was at a dentist appointment and I thought since I'm already out, why don't I just go and look at what Blick has to offer? I bought a warm and cool of all the primaries. Primary red, magenta, cadmium yellow, lemon yellow, phthalo blue, am I pronouncing that right? Ultramarine and white. That's really all I need. I can mix any color I need with these. Artist grade paints are priced differently based on how expensive they are to make, even if they're the same brand. These colors were $6.49, the Quinn Magenta was $9.94, Cadmium Yellow was $14.64, and the 37 milliliter Zinc White was $13.44. I also bought an empty palette for around nine. I held off on buying brushes because I don't yet trust myself not to destroy them. In my rashness, I didn't realize that the primary red and lemon yellow I bought were both semi-transparent colors, not opaque. Always check whether the gouache tube has a black square or a half black square to figure out the opacity level. On to the painting. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but as soon as I squeezed these colors into the palette, I could instantly see how much more vibrant the Windsor Newtons are than the Himmies. Obviously, no surprise there, like, <laughs> like I'm not shocking anyone. That's fine. I'm sorry. Like I said, the Windsor Red that I bought is semi-transparent, and it came out of the tube kind of watery at first, the first squeeze. So my first impression was like, shit, I actually like the texture of the Himmies more. But the opaque magenta Turned that around. It more than made up for it. I love it. I love the yellow. I love the semi-transparent lemon yellow. I love the blues. I love this palette. I'm jumping straight into mixing some gradients because I need to familiarize myself with paint mixing. I need to break out of the marker mentality. I also want a sneak peek of the types of oranges, greens, purples, and pastels I can mix with these paints. But don't judge these paints by my untrained gradient attempts. This is just an exercise for my own benefit. <laughs> Removing the tape from this swatch sheet produced debris just like the Hemi set did. I would say the texture of the Hemis and Windsors while painting were pretty similar. After they dried was when I noticed the biggest difference. The dry Windsor Newtons look less dull and also less chalky. The Windsors were smooth to the touch, not as toothy as the Hemis were and I love them. I can't wait to paint with these. I'm going to make it a point to use all of my gouache paints in the coming weeks. I'm not giving up on the Himmies just yet. I'm open to liking them more. If you're trying to decide whether to buy Himmies, my first impression of them is that fresh out of the box, they're effective. They're opaque, they're easy to apply in even layers, and they have all the colors you're going to need for a very low price. I don't think anyone needs a 24 set though. It's so heavy, and the 18 sets have all the essential colors, so spare yourself that. If you have the money and want to indulge yourself with some beautiful, vibrant, highly saturated, and much more portable paints, I will tell you I have no regrets buying the Windsor Newtons. I'm so excited to use them. I'm gonna dive right into painting some pictures with this set, so if you wanna see that and more art videos in the future, like and subscribe. And if you have experience painting with gouache, I would love to know your thoughts on different brands, any recommendation or advice. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Bye.